Caterpillar cutting edges, 12 foot blades, two six foot sections, half inch thick, $3.25 each. Oh man, those were the days, weren't they? You could probably buy two of the bolts for it now for that price. Anyway, another 1113 installment. So we're gonna start getting the case covered up here today. We're gonna start on the top cover. I got that on the bench here. It's, um, it's really dirty yet. Lots of old grease, lots of that nasty old oil. We have the steering clutch levers. I've got this one that's bent, and I'm going to need to see if I can make it straight like that one. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. I'll give you 50-50 odds on whether or not we break that thing. I guess if we break it, we break it. Well, we'll move on from there. So, And then we'll see if we can work into maybe some of the shifter stuff. I'd like to get this whole mess cleaned off top of this old crate. So, All right, enough talking. Let's just get busy. All right, so, yeah. Lots of cleanup to do, but we might as well start with uh, getting some of these pieces off. We still have steering clutch actuator pull rods, heavy washer there, kind of a return spring, one of those on each side. Might as well pull them off. That one's kind of kind of stuck somehow. I'm trying to figure out what's holding it. It's so greasy, it's hard to even get a look at it. I think there might be a burr on here. Yeah, we got a high spot right there. Yeah, looking at this, we've got a broken coil on the spring anyway, and this takes a little bit of a dive out that way. That's kind of common to see on these. We'll get into that later, but I'm going to have to get that cleaned up a little bit, deburr it, and you know, we'll worry about that then. So We'll just proceed with Getting some of this grease out of here. At least get it so we can see what we're working on, right? Okay, peeling the cotter pins out now. There's that one. Do the other side. There's this one. Like I said, we'll clean that up, find where that burr is, and we'll get that washer and broken spring off of there. All right, now we'll loosen the pinch bolts. I got that one kind of tight. That one, work on the other one. There we are. There's one. And two. Now we'll just slide these shafts out of those arms. There we are. And you can see, even though we have the key that positions that arm on the shaft, we can still just take the whole thing out this way because that's on a smaller diameter than what the outer pivot is. So, okay. That's the tough side. The other side now, we can just stick a drift through and take it out. last of the large chunks out of this cover and just like that we've got another whole pan of parts to clean I don't think I'm gonna bother with this broken spring I've already seen enough of that to know what's up there so I'll be busy here for a bit
Okay, we've got everything clean. I ended up rehabbing all four of the shifter studs. Two of them came out with the nuts attached yet. I ended up getting all that stuff apart, cleaned it, chased it, got those reinstalled. All the old grease is cleaned out of the old pockets. Gasket surfaces are flat, clean. Shafts are good. Levers for the bases of the steering clutches are good. All the bolts, new gasket made. I did have to replace one of these pull rods though because, here I'll show you, this is the one that I had trouble getting that washer off of. You can see we got some heavy wear right here. We got a heck of a pulled thread going on there. Somebody had tried running the nut way down too tight and it's pretty common to see these things beat up like this. You can even see you sight down it. It's bent off to that way, that side. So yeah, pretty common to see um, abuse like this on these. They they don't really have a an easy life but the reason they get so tore up is because because of improper adjustment basically in your steering clutch mechanism so we have this angled actuator lever that these pull rods go through and if you let too much slack build up down here where that release yoke comes up with its adjustment bolt it means that you are pulling too hard and too far with your steering clutch pull rod up here and what it does it eventually bottoms out and binds because it, it can't pivot over any further than that because we're bound in that opening and you're taking up so much free play slack down here that should be adjusted with that bolt that it just it binds those and it, it'll bend them and wear them and tear them up and that's pretty common to see so luckily I had more of those pull rods so we were able to remedy that pretty easily but before I put these shafts back in, I want to use one for a tool. I think it's time to uh, try and straighten the steering clutch lever real quick. And I want to throw a shaft in that, that bore right there to kind of give it some support. So, all right, come on. I just did this off camera. Yeah, and it went just smooth like that. So, all right, get that wedge out of there. And then we'll cinch this down. Now, I'm gonna try a cold bend here. So, yeah, we're supported there and there, and I'm pretty much centered up on the bend right now. 50-50 odds this might break, it might straighten, I don't know. So I guess I'd be disappointed if it broke, because I like to keep it matching with the rest, but if it does, I have more. So we'll just start throwing some pressure on it, see what happens. watching everything carefully here. I'm looking from the side, kind of down this way. Okay, I can see my shaft that I have for support is getting close to contacting the, uh, the framework back here. So I think we're gonna have to slack off reposition. All right. Try number two. So I've relocated. We're moving up closer to the uh, the split bore end up here because when I sighted down, we pretty much got rid of the bend that was right here, but we still have some right there. So let's just see what happens with this. It's going to get more difficult to bend up here because it's it's so much fatter. getting better okay I really don't want to be supported out here where that split is but for what I have to do that's the only place I can actually exert the pressure so just go easy with it I'm more nervous now than I have been gosh it looks pretty straight right there but we're gonna have a little spring back we always do. Okay, we had a lot of spring back. Yeah, we need a little bit more. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna take that a little further out, tell you the truth. I need to get more hinging action on that. 
Oh, I don't like being out there. Now what are you going to do? All right, let's assess here. Okay, so now that we're finished with that shaft, we can start putting the top cover back together and I'm, I'm fairly happy with how it turned out it's not perfect but we are square up and down again my problem was and still is we have a little bit of a bend right here where it comes out of this this meaty um, base down here and I was trying to exert pressure just on this area to get that to straighten itself back out because it had the whole lever canted off at an angle and I was just putting too much pressure on this and the trouble too is this is the the thickest part of the actual lever itself it just gets smaller and smaller as you go out here so this is where it wants to bend easier so I was trying to block further and further in finally got to the point where the little voice in my head was just saying you know quit while you're still ahead so what I ended up doing was setting it up differently in the blocks so we still kind of dog leg off here and then I straightened it in about this area here. So we still have an offset between there and there. But from here on up, we're perfectly square with the bore at the bottom. So considering how badly that was bent, I am going to go with it. I'm going to be happy with that. We didn't break it, so I'm calling that a victory. So to put the cover back together, we'll throw the actuators or the little levers in here. And you can see how the lever end is offset they always go towards the inside and they can only go in this way if you tried to put them in that way there's not enough room because the pinch bolt would contact that wall over there so pretty simple and keyway looks like it goes up so greased the shafts and the bores so that it starts out with some lubrication anyway there's that one There. Sometimes you can push them on by hand, other times you got to tap them, but pretty easy. You just go until they bottom out on the shafts. So drop the pinch bolt in each one, and we'll get those tightened down. Okay. Next, we'll install the pull rods for the steering clutches, and I grease. Uh, the bores, I grease the links and I grease the pins. I like having plenty on that stuff. All right, cotter pins are in, so pull rods are secure. Everything looks right with the front cover, and uh, yeah, gaskets in place. We're ready to seal it up. Let's just take a minute to remember what it used to look like in here.
And with the cover bolts all tightened down, I'll put the fill plug in top new gasket under there. That's the L-1124. Basically, they're so cheap from CAT and they're used on like every main fill plug and drain plug on just about every machine of this era. I pretty much just keep a bushel basket of those on hand, brand new. And let's keep the momentum going. We're on a roll, right? So steering clutch levers. We have two of them that look pretty good again. Let's get those thrown on. Fun fact of the day, that's what steering levers look like in first gear. That's what steering levers look like in fifth gear. Really? So, all right, let's move on. All right, it's shifter time. So here's 1113s and, okay, I jokingly refer to these as the onion because <laughs> there are more layers than one of these. It's just ridiculous, but, one thing I like about 1113s, the original shifter knob is still in place. You can even see some of the little serrations that went around the edge there. I can't believe it. This is the first D2 I've ever picked up that still had the original shifter knob. And usually they always look like this because the that uh, Bakelite portion or plastic, whatever you want to call it, has long since fallen off of the threaded steel core. And that's all that's left on the end of the shifter. But so... I tell you what, guys, I really want to save that knob. Problem is, the only way to take that off is to ruin it because well, I, I did twist on it pretty good once already, and I'm convinced that I'm just going to break it and probably will be left with the same steel core as what we usually find on all the rest of them. So that complicates things quite a bit because to really take this apart properly, that knob has to come off of there. But all right, to show you kind of the process of how you would do it in the real world, we got poor old 2115's shifter right here. I've already done a dry run disassembly on this. There's a couple different, well, really only one difference. 2115 had a rubber boot in here above the, uh, the, the dome piece, whereas 1113 was first generation and did not have a rubber boot. They just had that metal dome. Otherwise, these two assemblies are the same. Oh, I tell you, I've got a brand new shiny knob that would go right on there, but oh, I just want to save that. It's going to cause me so much more work. Anyway, hey, that's preservation, right? I just, come on. I mean, that, that's the knob that they grabbed onto the whole time they were running this thing back in the day. So we got to try, right? Even if it takes us longer and makes more work, got to try. So, all right. So if I was just uh, of the personality to allow myself just to rip that old knob off of there, this is how we do it. So crunch, knob's gone. All right. So here's kind of why I call this the onion. We start out with the gasket, all right? Then we have this lower half pivot plate and we have another gasket. And with the knob off, we can just remove the gate housing. See that comes right off the top like that. You can't take that off if the knob's on there, but, and then we would have a cotter pin or split pin that will go crossways, keeping that uh, retainer cap down. So once that pin is out, we can pull this off. And here is the top metal cap, the rubber boot, and we have a tension spring beneath that. So, and now we have, this This is really interesting here. We have the, the metal dome here, and I don't know how these things wear and fold up on themselves like this is done, but that's astounding. I just don't know how things get that bad. I mean, it's that's like, you know, half an inch of metal is just curled right around there. The rest of that stuff. Anyway, yeah, that's that's 2115 for you. Poor old thing. 
So here is the uh, the other dome that is beneath that top one. Lots of wear around that too. And we have another gasket. And finally the top half of the pivot plate. And you're just left with the shifter handle and this ball is integral to it, but this cross pin will drift out with a hammer and a punch. I've removed those before and they usually don't, uh, it doesn't take that much to move them, so. All right, so that's how we would take 1113 shifter apart if I wasn't a complete pain in all respects. But, uh, well, tell you what, we can take that gasket off, we can take the lower pivot plate off and the next gasket. And, all right, so here's where we'd need to lift the gate off, but that's as far as we go because of that knob, so. There you can see that cutter pin that goes across holding the cap. We'll see how difficult that is to take apart. Okay, so the cutter pin came out without a problem. Cap loosened up. Tension spring still looks good. That wasn't in about three pieces, so that makes me happy. The upper dome piece looks awesome. No damage, no wear. Lower dome piece looks awesome. Um, quite a bit of, yeah, it's still even stuck. Look at that. Oh man, look at all that stuff. It's like a, it's almost like a tar almost. Look at that. Wow. There's like grass and seed and holes and everything else in there. But all right, there's the upper pivot plate. And yeah, we have this gasket on here. Let's see if I can do something with this here real quick. First I want to try and peel it loose without tearing it. Because I want to see... No, that's probably... Gosh, could I get that around there? trying to gauge if I could take a new flexible gasket and actually manipulate it over this upper pivot plate. I'm trying to think how I'm gonna, I can clean all this stuff with it kind of like it is right now all together. Of course this, I can make a two piece new gasket for that because this, by the time you get this high, it's not so much to keep the oil in, but it's to keep the, uh, the dirt and the water out. But, oh man, I think I can do this. It's going to be some more work, but I think I can do it. Yeah, and something else I'm looking at here, you can see the shaft that the clutch lever, main clutch lever pivots on is getting some pretty good wear. And uh, so, yeah, this was the main clutch lever for 1113. Whatever bent that other steering clutch lever also did a number on this. It bent it and broke the handle end off and so there's nothing more we can do with that. So these do have bushings in the bottom already, which is a good thing. And now I'm thinking I want to take that old shaft out of their pin, whatever you want to call it, and uh, turn a new one, refresh with a new bushing, whatever handle I choose to put on there. And these things are a pretty tight press fit. That's all that holds them in. And I mean, they're easy to take out without having to press, but these housings don't take much for for pressure trying to press things back in because of the, the thin webbing and the open design. So I'm thinking it's going to require making a tool and I'm probably going to have to stand here and stare at this for probably another couple hours and then, you know, one thing leads to another and for a knob, but what can I say? One knob trying to save the other one, right? Who'd have, who'd have thought that, but what's that? You, you did? You, you literally pegged that before the end of the video. Well, okay, I'll, you guys know me better than I thought. All right. So we're gonna cut the video right here. Um, kinda wanted to get that shifter on here before the end of this installment, but, oh man, here, slow down guys, you're starting to scare me. All right, we'll cover over that hole with the rag and I think I can do it. I don't know, like I said, I'll probably end up making the tool. So thanks for watching everybody. Oh, the adventures, what can I say? We have fun, right? At least I do, I enjoy the heck out of this stuff. So catch you later.